Guys, give it up for Team Teacup. You really turned that on quick. Terrifying. Just a little. Talk about a horror genre. Uh, guys, congrats on the series. I can't wait to check this out. Contrary to pop popular belief, this is not an adaptation of the Disneyland teacup ride. Just just putting it out there. They they adapt a lot, a no. lot of. It is, see, but it, <laughs> it's a low key. It goes askew. <laughs> yes. Did I just ruin the twist at the end yeah, of season that's, that's, one? I feel like there's a, a lot of mystery and intrigue around this one. I I believe it's based on the novel Stinger. Correct. Correct. Yep. Ian, can you set up this one a little bit and tell us uh, how Stinger became Teacup and, and what fans can expect from this one? Uh, yeah, James Wan's company came to me and said, hey, would you be interested in adapting this book? And I read the book and I thought, my first thought was, well, this isn't for me uh, because it's this big, brash, epic, huge set pieces, dozens of characters, an entire town under siege. And... Then I thought, wait, what if I flip it on its head? What if I take away the town? I take away most of the characters. I take away the big set pieces and just stay true to the conceit and the ideas in the book, not necessarily page-by-page -page adaptation. And that's when it came alive. It, became, it went from epic to what's called a keyhole epic, which means like a, a large story told on a very small scale. Uh, and then it... it, it like that. I wrote the script in two weeks for the first episode, and they came on board. Uh, so it is, you know, we have the blessing of Robert McCammon, who wrote the book. He, I met with him several times. He came to set. Uh, but it's very different. And to, to speak to what you're saying about mystery, Tika, uh, Stinger, the book, isn't a mystery. Uh, teacup is a mystery, and that's part of, part of the reason for that is if you read the book, you know what happens. So I need to change it so that it's an experience where you have no idea what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And then the, the mysteries started to pile up, and that became part of the uh, DNA of the show. Scott and Chase, can you guys talk about a little Sorry. bit about... <laughs> 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 yeah, a long way to go, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, can you guys talk a little bit about who you play? In, Take in what two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can you guys talk a little bit about who you play wow. and uh, what like what most appealed to you about this series? Yeah, I play James in the show, father of the family. Uh, we meet him, he's betrayed his family, he's betrayed his wife, and so at the same time as that's happening, all these external genre elements are coming down on the family at the same time, so it's a really precarious way to start a character, which I loved. But uh, the way I got involved was I, um, I I'd heard Ian, who I love his... I, Try to work with him for a number of years now. I read one, was it Glimmer in the Fade or Shade? The Glimmer of the Shade. I read that script a long time. It was this script everybody was talking about in the TV world. So I read that and knew I wanted to work with him. And I'd heard he was doing something in the horror genre. And that just, I just, I, 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 I couldn't really see him doing that. So I really wanted to see what that was. Mm -hmm. And so I got three scripts and it was, it was amazing. So uh, I went on a sort of charm campaign to try to get him to hire me for this, for this job. And eventually it worked. Oh, uh, I play Ruben and Ruben is uh, dealing with uh, being betrayed. Um, what, I, what I loved about the script and what uh, I believe I, I talked to Ian and Evan and they were pitching me the character and what, and what, what, uh, what the challenges would be. And as an actor, you know, you want to do stuff that challenges you. And I thought I fell in love with the character right away and all the drama that goes on with him. And I thought uh, there's some things I could bring to the table with it, but also just learning, uh, learning that character and trying to uh, bring it to as, as authentic as I possibly can. And, and, and it's in the scripts, you know, it's also working with the actors and working, it was a really well oiled machine, it was a fun time. Ian, what were some of the, your cinematic reference points for this one? It, you know, it feels like it's it's a horror sci-fi blend. It f sounds almost a little Spielbergian. Um, can you talk a little a little bit about you know past works that might have influenced you on this one? To, you know, it's funny. We tried to stay away from Spielberg. We tried to stay away from you know the kind of the Stranger Things world, mm -hmm. uh, and we thought a lot and talked a lot about movies from the '70s. Uh, very grounded. Uh, uh, realistic movies because to me uh, the idea was isn't so much to make a horror show it's to make a show about people who are dealing with something uh, more the uh, gritty realism of the 70s movies than things fantastical or horror movies just because we wanted to start from a very human level mm -hmm. and then the scares the mystery, the thrills they 
you build upon those from ground level, and those movies seem to be the you know the place to start. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Scott and Chase, you guys have both had long illustrious careers. You've gotten to work on eclectic, iconic projects. What was, if you can tease sort of, what what is something you got to do in this series that you you'd never done on screen before? I mean, for me, it was definitely <laughs> learning how to ride a horse, um, doing all that for the show. I mean, that's the other element of. <laughs> That was, you know, learning. trial by fire. Yeah, learning. Put that in quotes for sure. I mean, uh, I was able to sit Mastering upright. it. <laughs> Not mastering it. You learned how to sit on a horse. Yeah, just basically, <laughs> well, the horse is like cabled to two trees. And I'm just like propped up. Uh, that was pretty much it. But that, that was really cool. I mean, that was really fun. I mean, this whole thing was, a, it was a crazy, really crazy show. And the genre elements of the show were absolutely crazy by the end. Mm -hmm. I was reading them as we went. I'd finished one episode, read, you know, read the next one. Other people were reading ahead. And by the time I got to seven and eight, it was nuts. And I think some of the things that may get lost when we're talking about this is how emotional this show gets. And I really think that was really the, the part that I think audiences are really going to attach to is how emotional this show is. I mean, there's the genre elements for sure, but I think people are going to get blown away by how attached to these characters people come. How about for you, Chase? I was, I was really impressed with how fast we shot it. I think we shot like what? Uh, two episodes a time, was it? Yeah, yeah, Four yeah, blocks, yeah. And I think that added on to the performances and how we, uh, you know, filmed the the series, and it helped give that uh, that angst to it. Um, now, that was fun. I, I like, I enjoy working at that pace. Scott, I, I mentioned the fact that one of my first interviews was for Underworld back in two thousand three. Mm -hmm. Fans have missed you in the sequels. Yeah. Is there any chance we might ever see you return to that franchise? Yeah, who knows? I mean, Len Wiseman, who created that whole world, is one of my best friends. But yeah, we're always talking about something. I mean, yeah. there's talk of a TV show and doing something specific with that character, um, which I think that character is, guys, are, you know, there could be something really cool with my specific character. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see if something yeah. comes together. Justice for Michael. Justice for Michael, justice for you know. Michael. We'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. I, w I would, I would love to do something interesting, and fun. Uh, Chase, we're, you know, we're talking all things Comic Con today. You, we've seen you in Marvel stuff, Jessica Jones and Echo. We've seen you in some Twilight stuff. That was huge at Comic Con. Which of those franchises did you prefer? Oh, ooh, ooh. Um, yeah, Tico. Tico. <laughs> Tico. Tico's the best one. <laughs> Don't cheat. That's it. Done. Is there is there a future for uh, Black Crow? Do you think w w will we see him return? Uh, what, for Twilight or, or no for for, uh, for Echo? Probably not. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's out of my. Uh, you know. Uh, it's above my pay grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's above yeah, my yeah. pay grade.